Are you tired of the audio video quality of your tabletop streams and recordings? I'm going to show you how to up your stream quality for free. Hey everyone, my name is Justin Crane, and usually I introduce myself as the Dungeon Master of the No Fame Podcast, but today it's a tutorial, so I'm like your tutorial master. I'm here to tell you how to up the stream and recording quality of your tabletop games. Not only tabletop games, though, you can use this for a variety of other things. Twitch streaming, podcast recordings, anything you need to record remotely, this is a great solution for a high quality product. If your group is anything like mine, you've tried a hundred different ways to record your tabletop game or stream from things like Discord to Zoom, or you even using websites where they offer HD recording services, but they come at a hefty price. The problem with those is the monthly commitment that you need to make. We all know the ongoing joke of the tabletop community where scheduling is an absolute nightmare. Why would you want to risk wasting that money? Let's not f around. We're going to get right to it. First up, this is the bread and butter of this setup. We're going to be using a website called VDO Ninja. It's this, this link right here above my head. You can also find the link in the description below. It's made by a guy named Steve, an absolute legend, and this website is free. That's right. Free. Amazing. So if you find yourself using this website and you love it as much as I do, check out a link below on how to support Steve on what he's doing. I know as soon as my group finished recording, I went straight there to show some love. If you can do the same. If not, Steve has a great discord community filled with tips and tricks on how to use Video Ninja, what it's capable of, and also a lot of troubleshooting as well. It's an amazing place to go if you have any issues. All right, guys, as soon as you type in Video Ninja, you can see the link up there. You're going to want to create a room. You're going to enter your room name, enter a password. Now, the most important part is if you are the host and you're also playing in this game, you're going to want to click director will also be a performer that allows you to use your mic and your video and everyone can see you. very important. That's all we want to do right here. You're going to click enter the rooms control center. This is the screen you're going to be met with as soon as you join down here. You'll see enable uh, director's microphone or video that will give you an option to do exactly what it says. This kind of gives you a general layout of what it's going to look like from a director's view or the host view, if you want to think about it like that. Over here, you have an invite link for guests or your other players, for example. Now, you can just actually send the link like that. The players can type in a password. Super simple to do. But I'm going to show you a method to actually give them a, a more efficient way to join the game. All right, guys, what you can see here is I just copied the link over and I'm going to show you two quick ways to ensure that your players have an easier time getting into the video call. And if they drop in and out to ensure that goes as smooth as possible. The first thing is ampersand PW. This is the password of your room. What you're going to do is you're just going to take this line here and paste it right after the room. This can go anywhere. Technically, I like to put it after the room because it kind of makes more sense for my for me, for my brain. It's what works for me. What we're going to do is put in ampersand push. And what that is going to do is assign the player with a name or an ID. This is a big deal. We'll get into why this is a big deal later. But for now, you want to assign one for each player and just make sure it has a unique identifier for each person, whatever you want that to be, whatever is easier for you. But it will greatly help with your organization later with all of your videos. All right. Now that we've customized our invitation link, let's join this call as the director. We're going to click enable director's microphone and video. You're going to see the layout changes now uh, over here. You can select your video device. I'm using a capture card and you select your audio device. I'm using a loop back from my. Oops, I don't want to, though. I'm using a loop back uh, virtual cable from Logic Pro on the Mac. Lastly, select your audio output destination. I'm using my Focusrite Thunderbolt uh, for all of my audio output. And that's that's the basic setup for the director for the host. That's all you do. You can see my videos down here. It's, it's working. That's great. We'll get into some more options uh, in a little bit. What we're going to do, though, is I'm going to show you what happens when players join now. So we have that invitation link that we made earlier, which is great. 
We're going to invite some players in, and then we're going to get those into OBS. That's the that's the main thing we're looking at right now. All right, so all your players are going to do is they're going to copy that link and paste it into their browser of choice. I'm just going to do it in a new tab just to show you what's up. Uh, I'm going to join with a camera. It's going to be a duplicate of what I already got there, but this is just an example of what to expect for your players. This is exactly what they see. It's the same thing we just went through for the director. Uh, they're going to choose their audio source. You can see my mic is working. They're going to choose your, their video device, and then they're going to go start. This is what they'll see. Uh, this will expand as more, uh, this will change as more people start joining the call, joining the game, stuff like that, which we will get into right now. I'm going to close this window and I'm going to open up two other sources that aren't my lovely mug here. So everyone, I added two more sources. Uh, I labeled them one and two, Justin one, Justin two. You can see the unique identifier. That's the ampersand push that we set up previously. I, I set up one as Justin one. I set up the second as Justin two. Uh, you notice that when I joined, this is what you will see if you don't set up an ampersand push. You'll just see a randomly generated uh, identifier for you. That'll totally work for sure. You can definitely do it that way if that's what you want. I prefer a little bit more control over what's happening in my recording setups uh, just to kind of eliminate any future issues. I highly recommend actually going through and putting the ampersand push there and giving a unique identifier to each person. It'll save you a headache later down the road, I guarantee. So now that we've got our little sources set up, we're going to bring this into OBS. Uh, this is a fresh, uh, fresh session. The only thing I did was you can see my mic. I set up a obviously a camera and I set up my mic. So that's a video display and an audio input that I'm using just to kind of get things going here. Um, if you don't know about OBS, you're not sure. I highly recommend just checking out some YouTube videos about it. Uh, there's a ton of stuff out there made by really great people. They'll answer any questions you want. Um, definitely check those out if you're unsure about how to set this up. We're going to start bringing in links into OBS, bringing in individual people, uh, their video and their audio. What you want to do is copy the solo link of each channel and we're going to tab over to OBS. You're going to want to go plus browser, name it after whichever person you just copied that link from. In this case, it was Justin one for me. You're going to want to paste that link, the copy solo link, paste it under URL and set your resolution. All right, now the most important option here is control audio via OBS. Very, very important. You wanna click this to make sure you're gonna get their audio in your stream and your recording. Very, very important. I'm gonna click okay, bam, look at that. You can see it. Uh, that is number one in our little thing. We're gonna go copy solo link. We're gonna go back to OBS, do the exact same thing. Browser, name it. This is Justin2, for example, same thing. We're gonna paste that there. We're gonna set a resolution and oops, we're going to click control audio via OBS. Hit that okay button. Here we go, number two, beautiful. Look at that, two people in already set up in a matter of minutes. All right, uh, just in case you don't have your mic and camera already set up in OBS, you can copy solo link here and we'll bring this over to OBS. All right, we're gonna go add, we're gonna go browser. Let's call this original Justin, why not? We're gonna do the same thing as we did previously. Uh, I'm not gonna control audio via OBS because I've already got my mic coming in um, just for this particular setup, but you'll want to click that again. If you don't click this, you won't get audio from VDO Ninja for these sources you're bringing in. I'm going to leave it unchecked because again, my mic is already up there. Now, this is the view. Uh, it looks a little bit grainy, but we're going to give it a second here to catch up. You can see it happening in real time already. Look at that. So this is on the right here. This is the source from VDO Ninja streaming straight to OBS. And this is my actual camera live feed. Amazing. I can't speak for your internet quality. Maybe if you have slow internet, that is going to for sure affect it. In general, that's kind of like a, a given. Your internet speed will affect anything you're streaming. But if your internet's decent, if you normally stream, it should be fine. If you're hitting that 3,500, 4,000 kbps, you're golden. All right, guys, and that's the basics of our setup here. Uh, you can see 
from here, you can bring in your overlay. You can resize these windows, your people that you have in your call, place them in their overlay. The best part about this is each person is their own individual source. You can mix their audio individually, which is huge. Normally from Discord, if you're doing it that way or Zoom, you have everyone's audio. You can mix it from Discord or, or whichever program, but then it's coming out in one source into OBS or Streamlabs, for example. You can do this exact setup in Streamlabs. Uh, I use it for our live stream setup and it works the exact same way, the exact same method I just showed you. You can do that as well. Um, like I said, the, the best thing about this is if someone disconnects now, let's say we lose, uh, I will actually disconnect, bam, they're gone. They disappeared. Um, when they rejoin, we're going to see them pop up in the exact same spot. All right, I just logged them back in and look at that, amazing. Back in the exact same place they were before. That's why Ambersand Push is huge. I set that with Justin1. They logged back in using the same link with the Ambersand Push equals Justin1. They came straight back into the exact same area. We don't get any of that Discord where the video is, is shifting to fill up the space and ruining your overlay. This is what you can expect with this. You put an overlay on top of this, while their camera feed will go blank if they log out or close the tab, for example, as soon as they click that link again, they'll pop back into the exact same spot. Amazing. This is the basics of getting set up to stream, bringing in from Video Ninja into OBS uh, Studio. Incredibly easy. If you take 10 minutes, you can preset all of this, send out the invite links to your players, and then you're good to go right out of the gate for your next stream or your next recording. The next one we're gonna jump into is the recording setup here. Very straightforward. It's the exact same thing we have set up here in OBS, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back to Video Ninja. This is if you wanna record what you're doing. What we're gonna look at here is the additional controls. You see those right here. We've got record local and re uh, record remote. Again, additional controls right down there. Record local is gonna save it to your computer. If you click that as the director, it will save these files right to your hard drive. Record remote is going to create a pop-up on your player's or guest side, and it's going to record their audio and video to their computer. The best thing about these is that this will not be affected by your network. This records straight audio video directly to your computer from the browser. All right, the next one we're gonna get into is obscuring your link just in case you don't want to share your password and your room name with everybody that you're inviting if you want to keep it more of a private situation for yourself i'm going to show you exactly how to do that for, uh, we're going to go to this website right here this is called invite.video.ninja i'm not going to go into every option that's here but you can see it's very very straightforward it's very well made uh, the first thing you'll see is you enter the room name you enter the invite including the custom push ID and password. Uh, once you fill in everything you wanna fill in, there's a ton of great options here. You'll see your link is now down here for your guest link, kind of the same as the director room, but the big difference is obfuscate. As soon as we click that, it's going to create a link that looks like this, hiding your room name and hiding the password, keeping that private for yourself. And finally, guys, I think the last thing we're going to touch on here is if we're playing a tabletop game and you might want to share your map with your friends, that's always a fun situation to get in. There are a few ways to do it. I'm going to show you the way that I do it personally. We're going to take that link that we created earlier and we're just going to call it map. Uh, again, call this whatever you want, but we're going to join the same video chat in a new tab on the same computer. We're going to go screen share. Now, I have I've already opened up a tab, uh, a window here with a, a, a flat map on it. Uh, if you're using a Chromium browser, you can actually share a tab, which is great for just sharing Roll20 or Foundry or something like that. I have a window open. I'm just gonna choose a spaceship I made for our space campaign. Pretty straightforward. The director's room, you can see the map, you can see all your players still, which is great. We're gonna go back here. This is what your players are going to look at, for example. Uh, this is the view they'll get. You can full screen here. You can mute and unmute people, control their volume individually. Uh, you can even do picture in picture, which is great. We're going to take a look at if you wanted to use this in a battle map situation or you wanted to bring this into your OBS uh, studio recording or stream. 
we're going to do the exact same thing we've already done. Copy solo link, and then we're going to bring that into OBS. So I kind of changed the size here. You can still see over here on the right, this is coming right from Video Ninja, and this is my live feed. They look identical. Quality, again, unreal, amazing. Steve, doing a great job. We're going to do the same thing we did earlier. We're going to click browser. We're going to call this whatever you want. It's a map for me. I'm going to call it map. That makes sense to me. And we're going to paste the URL. We're going to change this to whichever you, uh, whichever uh, resolution works for you. Now, some programs like Roll20 and Foundry will actually let you bring in, uh, uh, will let you play your own audio and your own music. This is where this comes into play. If you click this for your map link, you can actually hear and control the music coming in from Roll20 or coming in from uh, Foundry or whatever other service you're using. Look at that, that's our map, beautiful, absolutely beautiful. Pop that in the overlay, whatever you're using, good to go. Have it on a different scene uh, is usually the way to go about doing that. Have your main scene with all of your players and then just have a scene here with the map for battles great stuff. All right, guys, that's pretty much the end of our little tutorial here. Hopefully you found some great information on how to up the stream quality and the recording quality of your tabletop games. Again, go check out Steve's website, check out his Discord community. Any troubleshooting issues you have, they have a huge resource there that you can look through. My name is Justin Crane. I'm normally the dungeon master of the No Fame podcast, a show where me and my lovely friends will play some homebrew D&D 5e we have a series called Null Shore that we show every Sunday, 8 p.m. Eastern Time on Twitch. We have a Savage World space opera called The Lost Frontier that we play every second Wednesday on Twitch as well. Same time, 8 p.m. Eastern Time. If you want to catch up on our show, all of our videos are right here on this same channel on YouTube. Null Shore. Again, D&D Modern 5e. Super spooky, super fun. Lots of shenanigans. Thanks again, guys. I hope this made a difference for you and your players, and I will catch you later on.